Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Beverly Kenworthy, the Deputy Regional Director for Southern California Division of High Speed Rail Authority. I'm pleased to be here with my colleague, who is the Regional Deputy Director for Central Valley. I'm just going to say a few words and do a quick update for you, um, because what you're really here to listen to is how the much progress we are making in the construction in the Central Valley. Just to give you a quick update and reminder that the California High Speed Rail uh, Authority was approved by the voters in 2008 with Prop 1A. It's a 500 mile project um, connecting San Francisco to the Los Angeles Anaheim area. And the mandate was a total trip of less than three hours, specifically two hours and 40 minutes. It's electrified service. So the, it's entirely electrified, entirely grade separated, um, and will travel approximately 220 miles an hour. Um, we've created a ton of jobs already. Um, the goal is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and not just once this um, alignment is running, but also during the construction, we use um, tier four construction equipment and our commitment to the environment is robust um, and also looking to increase rail ridership and provide an alternative to flying as well as connecting the Central Valley to the rest of the state. There's a growing community. There's uh, five million people in the Central Valley and already there's been um, economic development um, happening um, because of this project in that area. So this, uh, no, here we go. So this is, shows our alignment. We are headquartered in Sacramento. So our executive offices are in Sacramento. And then we have three regional offices, Northern California, Central Valley, and Southern California. Our offices uh, work with the, our team in Sacramento, as well as all of our consultants and project managers to advance the rail in our regions. Region, Northern California region is San Francisco to Merced, and they are fully environmentally cleared and are starting to work on advanced design ideas. <laughs> uh, you'll hear more from Tony, so I'm not going to talk about Central Valley. I run uh, with my director, the Southern California Division Office. We are from the end of Bakersfield through Anaheim. We have four segments, and that's mostly for environmental purposes. We have cleared two segments. We've cleared the Bakersfield to Palmdale segment, the Burbank to Los Angeles segment, and we just released um, last year the draft EIR for Palmdale to Burbank. It's a lot of P and B and things like that. I get them confused all the time. That is our technically most challenging alignment because it is mostly tunneled through the San Gabriel Mountains. So engineering-wise, there's it's a really big, big project section. Our other challenging section is Los Angeles to Anaheim. And that is because that is where our alignment intersects with freight, freight rail, and how that works out. So we're still in the process of working on that draft EIR. And we're not expecting that to come out until sometime in 2024. But we do expect the final EIR for Palmdale to Burbank um, at the end of this year. We have more than 10,000 jobs that we have created since this construction began, and this number keeps rising. As you can see from the video, there's a lot of activity. I've had a chance to visit Central Valley and go to some of the construction sites, and it's really exciting, and it's massive. It's just huge. Uh, we have about 34 active construction sites on a given day. A lot of that work right now being done, which I believe Tony will talk about, is uh, utility work and moving utilities and things like that is a big part of this project. We have a great relationship with the uh, construction trades. And uh, you'll hear more about that from Tony, but we do um, training for um, young men and women to become apprentices on our project. And in fact, um, at the end of the month, I'll be going up and watching one of their um, graduation ceremonies. 
We also have a very uh, robust small business program. We require 30% small businesses for any of our consultants, and that is disadvantaged business, veteran-owned business, disabled veteran-owned businesses. And our goal is 30% on for any contract, and I think we're very close to meeting that goal. Project funding, everybody wants to talk about this. It's always an issue, always an issue. But we, we have some money. <laughs> we were initially funded by Prop 1A, which was almost $10 billion. That was never gonna be enough to fund this project. Um, never, never, but we've had money since then. Um, we did get an ARA grant um, of 2.5 billion in 2009. We also um, had an appropriation in fiscal year 2010 for 929 million. That money was held up by the previous administration, um, but once um, Biden came in, we were able to get that money back. We also get money from your annual, uh, the annual cap and trade um, market, and that's about a billion or so per year. And then we do have about 49 million in raise grants. And we're constantly going after different grants. So this is what we're really focused on right now this week, is our federal state partnership for any inner, city rail pass inner city passenger rail. We have applications in for um, these requests, which is about 2.8 billion and 194 million to accomplish the following things. Our goal right now is to get Central Valley done and completed. It is the alignment that will test the trains. They have the capacity to test the trains. In Central Valley, you can't test a high-speed rail train in the city of Los Angeles, but we can do that in Central Valley. And once we get this up and running, um, we're gonna be moving on to next phases. But with this money, we would be able to start advanced design work for our other segments that are environmentally cleared. We don't start doing that work until they're environmentally cleared and until we have the funds, because that's how we better utilize our resources and not repeat some of the mistakes of the past. So I would like to invite my colleague, Tony, um, up to talk with you. And uh, this is her first time coming to Los Angeles and for her and I to present together. So I really appreciate um, her coming all the way down from Bakersfield. Thanks so much. Fresno, sorry, Fresno. Thank you. Thank you, the big city of Fresno. If any of you have the chance to go, it's expanding, there's a lot to do. Uh, thank you, Beverly. Um, it's so great to be here with all of you. There's a ton of work happening in the Central Valley and sometimes, unless you're on the 99, um, you miss it. A lot of our work is happening in rural parts of the Central Valley, um, in different smaller counties, so it's sometimes hard to see all of the really great work that's already taking place. Um, so I'm happy to be here to give you a, a small insight, and I love that video that we showed, and it's especially nice when you have really great speakers, because it's just the music, it's booming, and it's, it's nice to hear all of that good audio and those nice visuals. Um, so in the Central Valley, let me go to the next one. Out of the 500 mile segment um, that Beverly went over from the Bay Area to Southern California, we have 171 miles under design and active construction. Within that is 119 miles where we've uh, split it up into three different construction packages. Um, so you have your first construction package. If you're all uh, familiar with the county of Madera through Fresno, um, that is um, through mostly the city of Fresno is where that package is taking place. There's a lot of construction happening there. Um, as we go farther south, we get into construction package three. That's our largest construction package of 65 miles. Um, that takes you into more, more of rural uh, parts of the county, um, more of your overpasses, overcrossings, a couple of viaducts there. And then heading farther south, we get into our smallest package, um, construction package four. Um, that takes you into parts of Tulare County and then into Kern County through the city of Wasco. A lot of progress in the Central Valley um, since 2018. Um, I know a lot of our priority has been 
to complete the design of each of our construction packages, we are nearly 100% um, complete for all of our design. So that really allows our contractors, which this is a design build uh, contract. So when there's a percentage of design done that allows our contractor to head to those sites, um, start those utility relocations, um, and then all the while we're you know, acquiring that right of way, getting these sites ready to deliver to our contractor. So it's constant and uh, we're always working under a deadline. We understand we have a project to deliver, um, but we've made a significant amount of progress in getting that design to 100% so our contractor can do all of that heavy construction. 73% uh, of our structures and guideway is either in construction or has been completed. We've been able to complete a lot of our overcrossings in Madera and Kings County to allow for uh, vehicles, for us to open the roads and allow vehicles to use those, um, those facilities. 75% uh, of our utilities have been relocated or they're in progress now. So that's a heavy lift um, before we can actually deliver anything to our contractor to, um, to break ground and start those uh, large structures at civil construction. We have to get those utilities out of the way. Um, it's a huge lift, especially in the city of Fresno where it's pretty urban. There's a lot and the majority of our utilities are in those cities. Um, so AT&T, Comcast, PG&E, water and sewer, all that good stuff uh, is in progress. Um, as far as the right of way, um, out of the close to 3,000 parcels that we need just in those 119 miles, 96% of those parcels have already been acquired um, and delivered to our contractor to get to work. We have just a, a few remaining parcels that we need to acquire. Um, we're in the process already and then we can get that to our contractor. Um, like Beverly mentioned, uh, we have quite a bit of small business uh, participation in our program, which is huge. Um, it's really nice to see a lot of these family-owned, smaller, women-owned businesses um, that have the ability to get involved with this project. It's significant. It's a lot of experience, um, but it gives them the opportunity to expand their operations. So you have some family-owned, smaller uh, businesses where now they're opening second facilities, uh, opening a second uh, concrete plant, they're hiring more people, and then they're upgrading their equipment so that they're using green equipment um, on other projects. Um, by this summer, we're looking to actually complete all of our construction for Construction Package 4, CP4, and that is through the city of Wasco. So we're to a point now where we're finishing up you know, our last punch list for a lot of our structures, um, getting those ready, working with the city, with the county uh, to complete that project, um, and then getting us ready for you know, our track and systems contract, which hopefully we can have more movement on that by this year and next year. By 2026, we want to have our two remaining construction packages, those project sections in Madera and Fresno and Kings, um, done by 2026. And then I'm going to throw a, a lot of numbers at you guys just to show um, how significant and, and how much is going on throughout our, our different project sections. Um, 115 structures over a roadway, rivers, railroad canals um, throughout the valley that we have. Uh, we have 211 wildlife crossings. Uh, we, you know, there's a significant amount of coordination with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, making sure that we understand what the endangered species are, which most of them seem to be throughout our project section, so that's a lot of fun. Um, so a lot of uh, really good coordination with um, that department too. Uh, five miles of retaining walls. Most of our alignment is near um, existing freight line, um, so some of that requirement has been to construct an intrusion protection barrier wall um, that divides the freight line and California high-speed rail in case of some kind of emergency, derailment, anything like that. We do have um, quite a bit of that intrusion protection barrier wall that we've constructed. Uh, 24 million cubic yards of earthwork or guideway. Most of our alignment is at grade. We do have a, a number of different structures like you see here on the top. That's our San Joaquin River Viaduct in Fresno. Um, so that structure is elevated. We have a few of those, but for the most part, we are at grade. Uh, about 7.2 miles of railroad realignment. So a lot of really great work with Union Pacific and BNSF uh, to realign them as well. Um, and then we also had a project with Caltrans in Fresno. Um, that was to realign 
nearly three miles of State Route 99 in the city of Fresno. Um, Caltrans did a really great job and we have some uh, pretty big projects with them coming up, um, but they were able to complete that a couple of years ago uh, to make way for our high-speed rail alignment. Um, like I mentioned, a number of right-of-way acquisitions that we have to get done, uh, nearly or about 2,300 parcels that we've been able to acquire, um, and then those utility relocations that we're working on. Um, and then, of course, all of the environmental permits that we work so hard to, to receive. We're doing a lot of work in there. Another great thing about not just you know, talking about construction, but starting to look towards the future of planning for our stations. And if any of you have ever, well, actually, I'll ask, have any of you ever traveled on high-speed rail in a different country? And I mean, to say, I mean, just looking at their stations, you almost want to stay there. You want to shop, you want to eat, you want to uh, purchase things. And so we want to make sure that we create stations just like that, um, a place where people don't want to just hop on the train and get to their next destination, but we want to make it enjoyable. We want that um, experience to happen at our uh, California high-speed rail stations too. So a lot of stakeholder outreach is going on right now. We actually procured a contract with the designer um, they'll be designing all of our Central Valley stations. So we have one planned for the city of Merced um, in downtown Fresno. We have one in the Kings Tulare region um, and then into the city of Bakersfield. So a lot of coordination with those cities and counties, but then also getting in touch with what the community would like to see, what types of restaurants, how should these stations reflect what's already taking place in these cities, um, and then making sure that we connect the uh, regional transit uh, to our stations. So if it's ACE, Amtrak, uh, Greyhound, all of those uh, transit systems, we want to make sure that we're all talking to each other and we connect in some way. This is just a, a look at uh, some renderings for our different cities, what we have planned. Uh, of course, some things could change, but um, just making sure that when people arrive, they understand it is a high-speed rail station. Um, we're inclusive. A lot of different things planned in uh, different station areas. So this one is the city of Fresno. It connects the downtown Fresno side. And then as you go across, it connects Fresno's Chinatown. You can see there we have a couple of things called out. Uh, places for bikes, um, platforms, of course, ADA. Um, pick up and drop off. Uh, we have an area for electric vehicle charging, um, and then that pedestrian concourse you can see towards the top that connects uh, Fresno's Chinatown. And Beverly uh, touched on this already, but we have a pre-apprenticeship program in the Central Valley, and that was uh, we had to, part of our CEQA environmental document um, was to create some kind of workforce development program. Um, we understand that the construction happening through the Central Valley um, is considered, you know, through disadvantaged communities where you have a high rate of unemployment. Um, that's always been something that the Central Valley has dealt with. I'm from Fresno. I understand that uh, very much so. And so it's nice to see a project like this where you see the immediate economic benefits of construction where you've really just scratched the surface. We have a lot more to do, um, but creating a pre-apprenticeship program has been pretty significant. There's a huge uh, you know, need for labor throughout California, and not just for high-speed rail, but there's a lot of programs going on, a lot of different construction progress, uh, projects with Caltrans and all throughout the state where we need that labor skill and labor force. And so Programs like this have been really helpful in getting that. Um, so we've graduated already more than 100 students. Uh, at the end of the month, we will have another graduation to take us over that 100 mark. Um, and so it's been really rewarding to see um, the desire of these students to be there every day, 7 a.m. Some of them, most of them are from the Central Valley, but others are coming in from San Luis Obispo because they want that type of training. And it's been really rewarding to see that. Um, we also celebrated 10,000, creating more than 10,000 construction jobs um, since the start of construction. We held a press conference in February where USDOT joined us, um, the FRA joined us as well to show their support that this type of project is needed 
and the rest of the country is looking at California um, as an example of high-speed rail that needs to take place sooner rather than later. So a couple of things that are upcoming. I mentioned we want to finish one of our construction uh, packages, project sections by this summer. Um, track and systems, that contract, we're looking for that to go out this fall. Um, and like Beverly mentioned, that Palmdale to Burbank EIR, EIS by late uh, this year. Um, and then we want to finish our Caltrain electrification project. If any of you have uh, kept up with what's going on in the Bay Area, we do have that project that's ongoing. We want to complete that electrification um, by late next year. And then, of course, we want to advance our station design for our Central Valley stations. Uh, in terms of getting us to uh, ridership and operations, which it's really nice. I've been with the authority now for coming up on eight years. So seeing it from, you know, in a small orchard in Madera County where we're breaking ground to what it is and all of these really uh, significant structures that we're building, being able to, you know, start the conversation on what we want for um, operations. What does the rolling stock need to look like? The interior of the rolling stock, our stations, what, what will get people excited to take our system? So it's nice to start to to have that discussion with people. Um, so a couple of different dates that we have here for you. By the end of 2025, we want to complete all of our environmental clearances for our 500-mile segment. Um, by 2028, complete and begin testing our trains. It takes about two or three years to test our trains. And like Beverly mentioned, we need to do that in the Central Valley. You have a, a length of the project where we need to test it at maximum speeds. So uh, operations will be at about 220 miles. Um, but at maximum speeds, I believe we're building it for about 250. So we need to test it at that limit. Um, that along with our communications, um, our dispatch centers, um, our light maintenance facility, heavy maintenance facilities, all of those things that need to take place when we're testing the train. Um, by 2030 and 2033, begin service through the Central Valley, and that's taking us from Merced, Fresno, and into Bakersfield. Um, we want to make sure that we have uh, something sooner rather than later um, in operation. And then by 2030, uh, we want to make sure that we're in design for northern and southern California project sections. Um, when funding becomes available, um, you know, we're, we have a really great partnership with the federal government right now. Um, we want to continue that positive partnership um, and then make sure that we're ready when funding does become available, that we are shovel ready, meaning we have the designs, we have the environmental clearances so that when funding does make itself available, we're ready to, to take it, that opportunity. And I will conclude that, and I really appreciate all of your time, and I'm happy to take all of your really nice questions about high-speed rail, um, but it's very exciting to, to be able to show you a little piece of what's going on in the Central Valley, so thank you all.